potential friends and adventurers. I'm Em, and today we're going to talk about five attributes of a great treasure. Welcome to the DM table. So what makes a good treasure? We're going to find out. Well, for one thing, at number one, we have catchy looks. There is a saying, not all that glitters is gold, but uh, there is a saying for a reason, because all that glitters does attract attention. And so does anything with catchy looks. So whether you have something that's shiny or does something interesting, has animated lights in its uh, pommel jewel or something like that, whenever something sort of pops out mm, from the rest, it has catchy looks and that's already one point for our treasure is cool type of thing because you know we're doing this because not uh, all treasures are just a box of gold coins because uh, cool treasures are really memorable for players and um, this will be something that we'll be able to utilize to our advantage the second thing is uh, mystery you perhaps want to state well, there's nothing uncommon about this candle, and yet, why is it standing in the middle of that pedestal, all alone-like, in the middle of a room, on such a perfectly carved pillar to boot, and so on and so forth. If something is out of place, if something is uh, leaving something to be said, and yet it's attracting attention, then we have mystery that attracts players towards uncovering it. And this can be done in all kinds of manner, from mysterious functions to mysterious use in the present location, to various attributes that uh, it possesses for no apparent reason, uh, to just its um, design being weird or thing being out of place, leaving questions and answers and so on and so forth. But there's many a way, as I said. Um, after that, at number three, we have side utility. People love when they find something that's uh, completely free, completely useful, even if it's completely useless currently. It's almost like installing mods for your favorite game or your browser or something like that. As long as something can be gotten without spending something, without uh, going over limit of your slots for mods or your equipment limit or something like that, as long as you can pick something up, get it for free, have no consequences, and it actually does something fun or useful or even marginally useful, people love it because, well, they immediately think, well, with this new power, imagine the things I could potentially do one day in this fringe occasion when something happens and so on and so forth. And yet, uh, this is a nice, normal, natural way to think about things because, indeed, why not? And therefore, I love that sort of treasure as well. So imagine a paintbrush that can sort of on a touch change and customize color of a thing. Hmm, seems not that super useful, and yet it has so many uses that, well, it's a paintbrush, uh, it's not very encumbering, so people will be glad to have it and they'll take it. And as long as there's no drawback, it's a really memorable treasure because it has unique utility and it's uh, quirky and useful and yet it's not disbalanced because uh, you gave uh, something that's, um, well, really in a way uh, quite low powered. But um, yeah, it's a good treasure to have fun with and sometimes, whilst having fun with it or being creative, players will think how to make it powerful. At that point, don't be too surprised, don't necessarily try to take it away from them or rule against it. Just um, go with it like that was part of your master plan, you completely had full confidence in them that they'll be uh, brilliant with the uses and that this will be a powerful weapon in their arsenal. So, uh, go with that. And um, you can all enjoy it together. At fourth place, we have upgradeability. Say players find some sort of weapon in a dungeon and uh, they're thinking like, 
Well, this is a great weapon, but I can't really use it with my character build, and nobody in the party can use it properly, and yet it's powerful, but we can't really achieve this or that. I would have liked uh, this range or that shape, or I wield hammers, not swords, um, so I would love this design or that. Uh, I can't stand the color, it's ugly, something like that. Well, have have a craftsman in town that, uh, when uh, the craftsman sees them with the weapon, says, Hey, I can upgrade this for you. Mm, pick your path of upgrade. So, upgrade ability. Uh, you can sort of shift and change how something is received and perceived, and they can even get something that... Uh, sort of already say has mystery, say it's some sort of mysterious statue that they don't know what to do with, and uh, yet it's magical or something, they bring it, somebody sees it, says, oh, that's an artifact or something, whatever, you know? And then they say, I'll give you any weapon from my treasury for this, or something like that. It doesn't have to actually upgrade the item that they picked up. They can exchange it, um, it can be useful for a quest, uh, uh, a merchant may want it. Um, there's many things that can happen that are useful for players uh, from a useless item that's actually sort of cool, but they couldn't use it themselves. And then you found a solution for them. And if you pre-build these solutions, uh, they'll be there and the players happen upon them. I guess as a DM you can improvise them on the fly, but if you're a game maker or somebody like that, then you want to pre-build them and such. Then we have number five, which is a big one, because it's something that gives potentially the most depth to any item at the first glance, and that's indeed lore, additional lore. You could even call this point depth itself, but uh, that's too broad. You see, people collect all kinds of things. They collect old coins, they collect uh, old stamps, stuff like that. And uh, uh, why people collect stuff, amongst other things, is because they have all that history and lore and detail to them. They have a story and a picture. You reminisce um, from a collectible image uh, which episode this character did this uh, thing that's depicted in. You study your stamps, when they were printed, what was the reason, what was the uh, sort of mistake in the printing, what makes it rare, why people desire it, who was the artist, why was the art created, uh, like that and that, and uh, so people have collectibles that uh, became collectibles and rarities because of their, well, lore connected to them. That's why people treasure stuff that otherwise wouldn't have that much value at all. And this indeed raises dramatically depth and value of items in your own campaign for your players. So use lore at any occasion where you can use it, just don't necessarily go too long at it until questioned further. So have steps of uh, presenting lore. Describe uh, the style and carvings then stop, then wait for people to ask, then describe a bit of, you know, things that come with skill checks about the history of the item and so on and so forth, uh, and uh, maybe people bring it to identify uh, with somebody who knows better, and then a bit more lore, or a lot more lore if this is connected to the campaign in some director manner and so on and so forth, or any other methods that you want to present it in, as long as you make it so that it's uh, sort of step by step and people can opt in to exposition themselves as they go along and play. And uh, so we have all five, and all five can be used at the same time and create uh, the most memorable treasures of all time in your campaign. And so, adventure, if this has been useful to you, you can spare me a click and uh, maybe I can see you therefore here next and every week. I wish you luck on your adventures and indeed, we'll see you again soon. Bye.